Meet Robin Hansen. He's an economist and a futurist at George Mason University, and he's holding up proudly his new book, The Age of EM. EM means emulation, so he's interested in emulating or simulations of humans and robots. Now, he's also famous for the great, inventing the great filter. Are we almost past it? In 1998, this is a, online here, and basically the idea is you have the origin of life, and then supposedly we, we have species advancement on a one-dimensional scale, and that most species get stuck here in a filter, and only rarely do you get past it, and maybe there are these thresholds that stop uh, civilizations from advancing, and that's what explains the Fermi paradox that we don't see anybody else out there. He's also written a new book. I have no idea what it's about. It's called The Elephant in the Brain, but this guy is full of ideas, and I sat down with him in his home outside of Washington and asked him, are we alone? Hi, I'm Robin Hansen. Robin Hansen, what do you do? I'm Associate Professor of Economics at George Mason University. All right. In and Fairfax, Virginia. All right. And uh, are we alone, Robin? Uh, I've got two cats staring through the window, but okay, pretty so much it. <laughs> okay. So you're, you answered the question, are we alone with, am I alone or are we alone in this property, in yeah. your house, right? So, but in Fairfax County, we're not alone, I guess. Not remotely, no. Nope. Okay, and on the Earth, are we alone? No. And who's we? Well, we usually are focused on humans, so we humans on Earth. We humans. Have many other humans around us together as humans. Okay, so are we humans as a collective alone in the universe? Uh, well, we have many other animals on Earth and even machine assistants, but uh, they don't really satisfy as... Uh, as interaction partners, and as far as we know, we've never seen anyone else in the universe. So, if you're satisfied with your interaction partners on Earth, then we are not alone. And if you're dissatisfied with your partners on Earth, your, what did you say, the other, other organisms on Earth, then you, we are alone. Is that what you just said? Yeah. So, the, so whether the answer to the question, are we alone or not, depends on your satisfaction with your dog. It depends on what kind of partners you're looking for, exactly. The, the idea of simulating your brain and kind of downloading it onto something is kind of weird because it reminds me of a, the Cartesian duality between mind and body. And I've always thought, that's crazy. The mind and the body are so intricately connected, you can't distinguish them all. So, but then, then I'd say, well, okay, so do the mind and the body. And I'd say, well, wait a minute. I'm so intricately connected with everything else, my oxygen, my lungs, and, the, yeah. and everything. Well, I have to scan the whole universe there. <laughs> so I don't understand well, what you mean by scanning. So it's not about making a perfect identical copy of you. It's about making something that's functionally equivalent. It doesn't have to be equal Functionally to you. equivalent? So the whole With all my problems? I mean, I yeah. kind of the Freudian slips. <laughs> Is it going to do Freudian slips the way I do? It's going to trip over... Over what the world economy mainly wants is workers. People who can work as well as humans. Do I care about the world economy? You don't. It may not care what you care about. <laughs> I see. So, so it's going to say, I'm an economy. I'm, yes. I'm an world economy. economy is going to run to hire emulations and hire them all over the place. And if it hires them, it won't hire you and you'll be in trouble. Well, wait a minute. Haven't you ever heard of this guy who's a, in the, in the ma not the Matrix, the, the Terminator, John, uh, who's, yeah. John, who comes back and saves the world and kills all the machines because the machines are so inhumane. You don't believe in this guy then. What is his name? John something. Connor? Right? Yeah, that's it, John Connor. So you're not a John Connor fan. You don't think John Connor will rally the underdogs and say, to hell with the economy, we want to humanize this thing. We've already seen a number of large transitions of a similar magnitude. It was a transition from primates to humans. From A transition. From, from foraging to farming and from farming to industry. So what do you think of the idea of Gaia? Because that's, uh, that's such a situation where it isn't clear whether it's alive or not, the biosphere, so, uh, for example. The issue is the degree to which life coordinates at a global scale. It seems a priori unlikely to me, but I don't have a strong opinion. Uh, life is really finds it really hard to coordinate on much smaller scales than that. So it would be really surprising if somehow it can manage to coordinate at a global scale, yet it fails to coordinate in vastly slower, smaller scales than that. So you're using coordination of material as a definition here of life then? I'm an economist. Coordination is a key concept we think in terms of. So Like hurricanes going around and around and around. That's no. coordination of on about 500 kilometer coordination scale. Coordination of interests. So the idea is that when you have different... So we think in terms of creatures with interests, and that is a reasonable approximation of biology. Creatures with interests. That is... Animals and even species have interests, i.e. things that are in their interests. Wait, wait, wait. I, I read Richard Dawkins' Selfish Gene. The genes have the interest, then the people are just there as castles built by the genes. The ge people have no interest. Well, you might say the genetic or the 
gene interest is more fundamental, but still it can induce uh, interests of larger organisms too. So genes have interests, organisms have interests, even species can have interests to some degree. And so we have this concept of interest that makes sense to us because we see competing things with interests. So it's when you say with, for the good of something, right? So we do things for the good of well, our species or the good of our group, or the good of our bodies, the good of our genes. and individuals do things in their interest. They try to achieve interest. And coordination is how we talk about multiple things with different interests commonly achieving their interests. How about half a gene? I don't really care how you're going to split it out. It's not that interesting <laughs> to me. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just trying to understand. The sometimes it's useful to think in terms of interest. It's a com it's a thing that helps in economics, yes, it helps bono, in right? biology. Who, who it helps in legal things? Hey, sure, who, who benefits from this thing? Right, exactly. And so coordination is a concept framed in terms of interest. Once you have individuals pursuing their interests, sometimes they can fail to coordinate so that they each don't achieve their interests, and other times they can coordinate in such a way that they all achieve more of their interests via the coordination. It's hard but it's often worth it. And so we think in terms of organisms being a coordination of cells, uh, a genome being a coordination of genes, we think of societies being as coordination of individuals, and therefore we can think of the coordination of all life on Earth, and that's what I understand Gaia to be, a hypothesis that somehow life on Earth is managing to coordinate on a global scale in ways that are not very visible. That would be very surprising to me, because when I study and look at coordination on much smaller scales, I find that it ends up being very hard. It's even hard for organisms to coordinate their genes. It's hard for communities to coordinate individuals. The larger a scale of coordination we go to, the more difficult and more often it seems to fail. And so I would think that if we went to the global scale, we would just mostly see failure to coordinate.